I don't have a fade in, but we but we are we are live. We're we're live now. We're live now. Wow. Tell pe tell people where you spent the night last night, Tim. Well, it wasn't last night. Uh, oh, oh. It was a few nights ago, in the Atlanta airport, flying back from Montana. No fun. I, I am not built for sleeping on the floor anymore. I've, I've figured that out. Oh, you know, when you get to be your age, it's tough. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, and the thing is, it was such a great trip, and the flight out was great, and rental car was easy, the, the, not cheap, but easy, and, and then made it all the way back, and they had me flying from Spokane to Atlanta and then to Newark, and... I got off the plane in Atlanta and just kind of, you know, that spidey sense. You just, you just kind of <laughs> know something's wrong <laughs> and checked my phone. And it was like, oh, boy, uh, not flying out till tomorrow morning and then flying from Richmond. I had to fly from Atlanta to Richmond and then to Newark. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure everybody's experiencing it this summer, though. So. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. I'm lucky that I haven't had to fly anywhere this summer. So fishing close yeah. to home this year, at least for the next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have some good travel coming up in September and I'm hoping things kind of simmer down by then. So we'll see. Well, I see that uh we see that we're getting getting people saying hello in here. And if you are are new to uh Monday fly tying, or if you're new to one of these vicious tie offs, welcome. <laughs> we like to we like to have fun in these sessions. We we hope you learn something, but but we also uh, like to try to amuse you as best we can. So, are you going to be amusing today, Tim? I'm going to be amusing, but to, while we have everybody, uh, just a quick show of hands, folks. How many people have heard of a Rosenhopper out there? Wow. <laughs> so let me okay. tell you. So let me tell you how this came about because it's not my name. Um, I uh, I uh, submitted a bunch of my personal patterns to Orvis to offer in on the website and in in the line through Fulling Mill. And this was originally called, what did I originally call it? Let me see what I originally called it. The Tominator? No, 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 it was nothing like that. I got to find it here. Oh, I can't see. I think I called it like a Chubby Chernobyl variation, which it is. And uh, I don't know. You, you there? I anyway, don't. anyway, um, my uh, my boss Tucker said, "Let's call it the Rosenhopper." So I said, "Okay, he's my boss, so we're calling it the Rosenhopper." Not my name, my pattern, but not my name. Okay. And I I hope that. I fully expect probably to lose uh, on, it, on my own pattern, but I, I fully expect to uh, for you to show me better ways of tying my own pattern. Well, Tom, if you go into it with an attitude like that, you know, that's just, you got to have confidence, just like with an angling. Just I have confidence. It's just that you're so good. <laughs> now you're just buttering me up. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll try, right. I'll I'll try to. I'll try to. I'll try to screw you up as best I can. <laughs> well. Anyway, so the pattern is uh, is 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 on is on fa the Facebook listing. It's also posted there. Uh, if you look in the comments, the pattern is posted. So if you're tying along with us good luck if you're not uh this as as all of these videos will be archived on the, either the both the orvis facebook page and the orvis youtube channel under uh tying with tom so um you'll be able to look at it if you want to go back and look at it again 
And uh, anyway, this is um, this is a, a pattern I use a lot. Uh, I use it uh, all over the country. I use it in small streams in Vermont, small and medium sized streams, big rivers. Sometimes I use it in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Um, it's it's a it's not specific, it's not specifically a hopper pattern. It's really just a, a big general terrestrial. I think sometimes fish take it for a moth or a big stone fly. Um, it's not, you know, you don't have to have hoppers around to fish this fly. I fish it early in the season, well before there's any hoppers, but it's a big, it's a big um, buggy looking fly. And it's all about uh, visibility in flotation because I often use it as a dry dropper, uh, dry. Uh, so it's an indicator. So it's it's all about, you know, it's all about making it look buggy from underneath, but also about uh, being able to see it and uh, a fly that's going to float all day long. I, I will fish one of these flies with frequent applications of um, desiccant powder, but I'll, I'll fish the same fly for hours uh, over and over again, and um, it'll it'll just keep floating and it'll stay visible. I, well, Tom, I mean, th with this pattern, and I noticed this um, out in Montana, out in the Kootenai just a few weeks ago. One, one of the things, we were fishing chubbies. They were like pink and purple is, are the big colors out there. And, and I'm sure this would work just fine. But a lot of times it was kind of the activation of the fly. Uh, Tim Linehan out there calls it skitching. And mm -hmm. you, you could put a fly out there and just leave it sit. Nothing, nothing, nothing. As soon as you move that fly... <laughs> Even just a little twitch, six inches, you have one or two fish just out of nowhere come and blast the thing. And I, I believe, you know, the, the the rubber legs, the the real floaty pattern, kind of the, the little V wake it makes when you pull it or skitch it, whatever you want to call it, um, is, is real important with patterns like this. Not all mm -hmm. the time, you know. Sometimes yeah. they they come up and take it just as a as you know bobbing along, and uh, but other times, uh, particularly in that, you know, like. Um, in a window kind of a, a current boil almost where it's real clear and shiny and and uh, that seemed to be the place where just a little sketch across the top would would uh they, they come up and blast the thing i'm a minimal sketcher yeah i i, I almost always fish this dead drift and i'm uh i if, if there's a foam pocket it's really foamy i'll i'll sketch it through Skips the foam. That. oh that seems to really turn on <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I more often dead drift, but the, you know, yeah, there are times and days when a twitch or a sketch, uh, just a little subtle one will catch yeah. their attention, but all right. Yep. All Who's right. Going so for... you're going to start your start. I am. I least, am. Yeah. It's your, your bug, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> and right. I have a feeling we're going to start in two entirely different ways. Oh, I'm um, sure we are. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we're going to tie the whole thing in two entirely different ways. So uh, this fly is tied on a size 12, uh, uh, 2X long dry fly hook. You could tie it on a, you know, a 3X nymph hook if you want. I like the lighter hook because it helps it float better. I'll tie this as small as uh, a, a 14 and as big as an 8. Um and a 16, I would probably leave off the rear wing and the rear legs just because it's getting kind of getting kind of small. But uh, I'll tie it down to 14, size 14 this way. So I'm using 6-0 tan thread. I'll start my thread up toward the eye. And I'm going to, I'm going to wind all the way back. to the bend not over the bend just just at the bend and then i'm going to take some l care first i'm going to get my other glasses if i can find them in there okay so i'm going to take a piece of l care and not that that this is cow elk it's a little longer and softer. Um, I like cow, cow elk, cow elk or calf elk. You could use any kind of elk you have, but 
Um, I like the finer, longer stuff. And I'm going to get a fairly small amount of elk hair, about that much. And first I'm going to hold the tips, clean it off. Then I'm going to, sometimes this has a little, a little curl to one side. You can see the hair curls. So to keep that from um, affecting the, your fly, you can just roll it in your fingers and that will, that will kind of straighten out those fibers. And then I'll give it another pull to remove any short ends and fuzz. Then I'll take a small stacker for the tail. Stack it. And I know Tim does this differently. So there's my nice evened out tail fibers. That are pointing to the right. Yeah, but I switch them around. I, you know, I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty um I'm pretty handy with my hands. I can I can switch hair from one hand to another without screwing it up, Tim. Opposable thumbs, right? Yeah, opposable thumbs. Yeah. I'm gonna make it the I keep the tail fairly short, about a hook gap. And I'm gonna angle the elk hair a little bit toward me. And then I'm gonna come over the top and hope that it kind of just rolls onto the top. And then I'm gonna take three or four nice tight turns to keep it from rolling like so and then the easiest way i find to do this part tying this down is to hold that along the shank and don't worry about too much thread tension here come come forward in spirals i can't get it to spiral because that camera's in the way Right about to, you know, three quarters of the way. And trim it. And then bind down these ends really well with your opposable thumbs. And now, as you go back to the tail, put some pressure on it. To secure that. So there's your there's your tail. Should I put my body on now too? Sure. Well, why not? Because I'm going to do it so much differently than you are. That you know. <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah. Already. Yeah. <laughs> it's remarkable. Oh, dear. So I'm going to take some hairs here, and um, I I usually use a lighter hairs here for this, and. The reason I like hair's ear instead of a synthetic is that all these little um, fibers of different length and coarseness really help hold air bubbles and also hold fly floating. So I think it helps the fly float and it gives it a nice buggy look. Um, so I'm going to, and I'm going to dub a long noodle, not much taper, a little bit of taper at the at the top of this, but I'm going to dub a long noodle cause I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do two passes with this dubbing. And as I get down on the thread, I'm going to get a little thicker and then you can taper it at the other end too, kind of like an hourglass. Uh, let's see if I got enough here. And put it on tight. Put it on nice and tight. But but be generous with it. You don't want this. This is not a delicate fly. So you, you want to put a fair amount of dubbing on there. Oh, I missed a spot. A flagler would notice that too. There we go. And I'm going to go all the way up. Almost to the eye. And then I'm going to come back. Ah, it's a little too thick there. So if it's a little too thick, you can just take a little off, re redo it. And I'm going to come back to about the hook point with my dubbing. And I'm going to stop there. Okay. Okay. You're up. You're up. 
Let me get my cameras going here. Well, as is so often the case, <laughs> I, I start just a little bit differently than my good friend Tom. Um, you know, I think this is really good that we never tie it the same way because people can see that there are lots of different ways to, to tie the same pattern, have it look almost the same in the end. Yeah, but I, I mean, it really is remarkable how many different ways there are to tie in the same material or <laughs> wild. Anyway, um, I am going to start a, a slightly larger hook than Tom's. I hope I don't get take points taken off. This is a size 10, um, and it is a, a, a nymph hook, a 3X, 2X long, uh, 2X long, 2X heavy. So, yeah, I, whoa, I'd rather whoa, have a lighter. Whoa, wait, 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 wait a minute. I, I'm tying on a 12, 2X okay. long. And you're tying okay. on a 10, 3X long, which is a no, bigger No, no, it's, it's a 2X long. I made a mistake. 2X long, but it's still a size 10. It's a size 10. Yeah. Um, so so you're 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 doing it on a bigger hook, which makes it easier. Already. I am. I, I Apparently, I did not get the memo that it had to be a size 12. But um, uh, since I, I, I'm going to look up my emails and, and uh, prove to you okay. that. Uh, you, you, go do, you go do that. <laughs> And so the, the first step here is to take the hook out of the tying vise because I need my tying vise for the next, the first step. Um, first step for me, and I, I didn't have the, the legs that were recommended in the very, um, the, the recipe sheet that was given to me. Okay. A very so, detailed recipe. Yeah, very it was very specific. <laughs> very detailed, yeah. Along with yes. uh, a, a strange little picture of the fly. Um, it wasn't. It was a good picture. It, okay, it was a good picture of the fly. And all ah. I'm going to do here is I'm going to take two strands. This is. These are silicone legs. Kind of my favorite ones too. I, I really like silicone round, but. And I, I don't know whether Tom does this or not, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to have the back legs uh, be kind of um, doubled up and then single. And so that's where I need my tying vise. Just a little. I I don't I don't know whether anybody does them like this. I just use my tying vise as another hand, and this is a little awkward to do, but take plunger style hackle pliers and just do a loop and then grab that material hopefully and pull it through to knot it that didn't do a very good job oh there we go and then i can just do the same thing on the other side I could have done this beforehand, I guess. Oh, no. We want to watch you struggle with it. Yeah. That's Some people fun. can do this with their hands, you know. I, I know. And I usually can, but uh, not today. So. What do you think? Does he get points off for this? this for struggling? This is, this is a little. This is a little. Uh, this is oh, that's tragic. It's actually a fine way to do it in the end. There yeah, we go. yeah, fine. Yeah. But here's the advantage. Uh, what I think is the advantage is <clears throat> then I have these two things, and I can kind of pick and choose what I want to do, which based on which way the legs are going to go. But I am going to go like this, snip that in the middle, and then I choose which way I want these legs to go. I'm going to go like that. Make sure that knot's really tight. And I can just snip one of these guys off. So they will be the pointy down part of the legs. That'll be the thigh. I think you can see that, I hope. There, that's better. Again, pull them really, really tight. Yeah, you can, I'm not going to do it here, but you can put a drop of head cement on there. I would not recommend UV cure resin. It kind of tweaks the the silicone all over the place. So that that's what I end up with. Um, now that that's done, I can go back and put my, although not the biggest, still ample 
qualifying size 10 hook in my time. You know, and next then, time we tie a fly, I'm going to tie one size bigger, okay. regardless of what it is. <laughs> you I'm, can do that. No wonder you loaded, always win. You're always using a bigger hook. Huge, huge, huge. <laughs> yeah, big difference between a 10 and a 12. <laughs> Woo um, so for me, it's 140 denier. Uh, and the, the reason for the 140 denier and... and I, I know Tom's using six aught is if I'm tying foam down, I really want to have a, uh, a uh, fairly okay. substantial, uh, a strong thread to, to pin that foam down. Now I'm not taking any chances here. I I've, I've made a good thread base going all the way down. I'm going to open spiral wrap all the way back up, almost not quite to the hook. eye, right about there, about a hook eye length back. And then I'm going to switch over so I get caught up with Tom. I'm using its yearling elk, which I guess is the same as cow elk or young elk. Or They're very similar. I have trouble yeah. telling the difference between yearling elk and, and cow elk. Bull elk yeah. is definitely different. but Yeah, if it, if it wasn't in a labeled package, uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't know. Um, and same thing, I'm going to grab just a small clump. Strip the everything short. That's that's a few too many fibers. And I I do I notice that there's some really like that fuzzy stuff in here. I don't know what this is for combing, but it works really well for eyelashes, eyebrows, something like that. Takes that. That fuzzy little stuff out of there. And again, a small, small hair stacker. Just, just a great thing to have a really nice small one for such applications. Now, uh, what I'm going to do <laughs> is open the hair stacker so the tips point in the direction of where I want to tie them in. So I don't have to like flip them around in my fingers in my opposable thumbs. I'll teach yeah, you how to do it. I'll teach you how to do it sometime. And next what I'm going to do. Next time I see you, I'll teach you how to flip hair around. <laughs> show show me how to do that. that. Yeah, it, yeah, sure. Maybe a tutorial video or something. Yeah. How to yeah. flip hair. And I'm going to do the same. And since it's his pattern, I guess I got to tie it to about a hook gap in length. You, you could do whatever you want. You're I'm already. Gonna do just, you're I'm going to do a little bigger. You're already off. <laughs> You're already you're already off the rails here. To just go ahead and do whatever you want. And so and, the for my tie-in, I go in. I'm gonna go pretty much right above my tying thread. Snip it. Give my bobbin a nice counterclockwise spin. Of course, it's gonna jump rearward and catch that. And I'm really gonna bind this down. And you know, not knowing a whole lot about this pattern, I thought maybe Tom was going to use the hollow elk hair as a uh, some kind of flotation device underneath. Yeah. But and then I take a few loose wraps back here just to kind of channel that tail so it doesn't flare so much. But super important for me, and I know I'm going to get points taken off for this. I cannot stand any foam rolling around the hook shank um at any time so i'm gonna go this is just some super glue and really use the super glue to to build up this base that's hopefully really locked to the hook shank so anything that goes on top of it can't spin Got some fibers that snuck around there. That's going to be points off. Dang it. Yeah, that is a good point because if you don't, I mean, if you don't put a lot of pressure on these tail wraps, uh, as we both did, uh, the 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 fly will roll on you. Yeah, and when you're when you're putting foam on, it just wants to roll real bad anyhow. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, I, I I don't I don't shave 
rabbits faces um myself <laughs> so <laughs> which is fun i guess um so i i just get a packet of the natural <laughs> and i'm uh, guilty i do shave <laughs> rabbits faces <laughs> hey what no judgment tom whatever you're into um <laughs> so i'm i am gonna make a nice big noodle i'm kind of limited because i have this camera between betwixt me and the fly and so i can't make a huge long dubbing noodle but what i want to have is enough to make it down to the the front end of that that underbody and then all the way back so we'll, we'll see how i do here and hopefully when i'm wrapping this you can see how close that sucker comes to the lens of the camera see how well i estimated here get that covered up and then i can kind of angle her back and right back there as well so uh to, to uh, same as tom uh i i think that underbody is, is having a natural underbody like that really helps out and something that traps desiccant to help it float like 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 the the, the hair's mask is, is a wonderful yeah. thing yeah i think we're at the same spot okay um can you take care <laughs> we have we you're have gonna a use, you're turned... gonna use some you're gonna use some cat fur no he he turned 18 today so he's yeah. celebrating um and now look at look at how similar those flies are except for color yet we did it so so, so much differently, differently. <laughs> yeah. like so differently yeah all right so um i'm gonna i'm gonna i use tan foam for this fly so i'm gonna take a piece of tan foam get one here that's already been used and i do like to use a foam a foam cutter um <gasps> It don't it it doesn't work it doesn't work for both ends because I, I can't find one that's short enough for this but oops wait a minute I need my uh, need my little rubber pad here but these foam these foam cutters do give you a nice nice round end. There's a little tab on that, always on that foam, so you can get it out of the, the thing. I'm just going to trim that off. Okay, so there's my round piece of foam. And I am also going to use super glue. Let's see, there I want to be. And I'm going put, to put a drop of super glue right on top of the hairs here, there. Let it soak in. <laughs> That's going to help keep this foam from rolling. And I like to make the body just as long as the tail. So right there, pinch nope. that, center it, come straight down. And you'll, at this point, you only need about three turns. One, because there's, there's super glue under there. And the other is that you're going to tie, you're going to tie some other stuff on top of it. So there's that. I'll put my wing on now. I'll put my wing and my legs on. Uh, so the wing in the back, and this is where it varies greatly from Chubby Chernobyl, is uh, elk hair. So I put elk hair, I put elk hair in the back, and I put uh, a synthetic fiber in the front. I'm just hedging my bets. I think it has a good look from underneath, and. Um, it a I think it aids in the visibility. Some some water elk hair seems to show up better than synthetic fibers, and some water elk hair does. So I'm going to and this is about three times the amount that I use for the, the tail. I'm gonna clean it, roll it so the fibers align better clean it again and this is a fairly substantial amount of elk hair don't be shy about this this portion of it 
As you can see, that's a pretty good amount. And for this, I'm going to use a wider mouth stacker because it's hard to get it in that thinner stacker. You want the hair to, when you stack hair, you want the hair to kind of use up about three quarters of the tube. If it, if it fills the whole tube, it's not going to stack well. And if it, if it's, you know, if it's kind of lost inside the tube, then it won't, then it's hard to get it out. So that's why I use a bigger stacker here and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to switch hands here, Tim, I'll show you how to switch hands. You just pinch it and you roll it over and you grab it. See, see, see how that works. But why? <laughs> I don't know, because I've always done it that way. And then I'm going to put my wing on here, and I like the wing to be just a hair longer than the tail. No pun intended. And I'm just going to come straight up on top, take a couple turns, and then I will kind of wind my way through the butt ends of that hair. And that will fully secure that elk hair. So the wing's nice and straight. And uh, it's, it's nice when you have long elk hair because it's much easier to separate the butts from the wing. And you can just come in here and pull on those longer fibers. And usually... I find that I need to come over on the far side, trim those butts a little bit more. And you, you've already secured that, that elk hair pretty well. So you can, you can come in and clean that up. So now I got that little waste of elk hair there and I'm going to bind it down a little bit more. Just to clean it up. And now I'm going to make my legs freehand. Freehand, oh, nice. Tim. Freehand. Freehand. Yeah, freehand. So um, I like these. I like this kind of span flex type material, but you could use silicone legs. Um, this is hairline, hairline um, barred and speckled crazy legs. I like them a lot for this fly. And I'm going to first cut, cut two for my legs, my rear legs. Oh, I got three. I lied. Okay. And here, Tim, I'll show you how to do it by hand. Okay. So you fold it over. If you can tie a clinch knot, you can, you can, if you, in fact, if you can tie your shoes, you can tie a leg and, and, you just wrap it around and pull that loop back through. Look, no vice required. Okay. How about that? You're learning all kinds of new tricks today. I, I am. Like Jeez, that was a good one, too. Yeah, you know, how to tie without all these fancy tools. Yeah, plunger-style hackle pliers. That's yeah, plunger-style <laughs> hackle pliers. I know you you love all using all. them. <laughs> I use them for everything. Yeah. Now I'm going to cut. And uh oh, uh, uh oh, one. What are you saying, uh oh, for? You think I was going to cut both legs? It's not a chance. <laughs> That's probably a little long. Yeah, cut it again. There you go. Sometimes I just, sometimes I just cut both of them like a and leave like a little claw a claw yeah oh i guess what you mean yeah yeah just i cut i don't but you know yeah if i'm if i'm with you i got you because you know some moths have claws just kidding and then i i usually start on the far side and i like that i like to try to manipulate it so that the legs kick out Like so. Okay. Take three or four turns. 
We're on and the that, same page there. Yeah, that other leg's too long. There. And then trim these. Sometimes if your rubber is long enough, you can use those ones you just took off for the front legs. But this stuff is not quite long enough. And then I'm going to come around to the near side. And again, I want the want to manipulate it so the leg kind of kicks out. So just move them around in my hand. And you can eyeball these for the, just press it against there. Take a couple turns. Nice thing about rubber legs like this is you can readjust. And then, you know, if you put a little more pressure on there, you'll get them to kick out a little bit more from the side and trim these. Should I stop there? Yeah, I'll stop. There. Yeah, that's a good spot, I think. Okay. Let me get turn, turn back on here. Okay, so I need to make a foam body just like Tom did. Pretty pretty much the same thing. I, I really like, uh, my, mine's a little different, but I, I think um, I have a cutter that it, it's kind of curvaceous. It has a hip to it, uh, make, makes this shape. And uh, can I mention a company name, Tom, or is that against the law? No, you can mention a company name. Okay. Um, this this cutter is from River Road Creations, and they're kind of the only game in town. Uh, maybe somebody else knows another one, but uh, I've been using them for years. And as you saw Tom do, he just pressed down with his hands. But they make now make this unbelievable little press. Oh! And I tell you what, believe it or not, it works better with dull cutters than it does with sharp ones. So. If your cutters get dull, you know, after a hundred or so forms that you've cut out, this little press uh, is just, is really just a kind of a minor miracle how well that sucker works. So, so you need a you need a vice and pliers <laughs> to tie a knot in a rub, in a rubber leg, and you need you need a you need a press to make yep. a foam body. I do. Um, <laughs> anyway <laughs> wow so what o- there what other tools are you going to use you get a socket you're going to get a socket wrench a socket out? wrench maybe yeah. um um and so what what i have here is this little body and we're probably going to differ here a little bit but it's the reason i use the size 10 hook i'm coming clean was that it just happens to fit really well with this mid-sized uh body uh cutter and one of the just a small little difference here i'm going to bring my thread up just to about the hook point and when i when i put this on i want this kind of front notch to be up behind the hook eye but i i am not going to use adhesive here but what i'm going to do this is it might take just a second for me to get it come on you i'm going to grab a section uh, just a small section of foam i don't know can you guys see that yeah um yeah. and uh, what i found was that as opposed to one contact point in terms of getting foam to stop spinning around anything really works just just expanding that a little teeny bit and we're going to cover it up with dubbing and, and wing stuff and all that good junk so um it, it just seems to work for me I think that when you tie in that wing, you end up doing that anyway. But yeah, um, I noticed that you when point. you were tying that you you did that. Um, yeah, yeah, and, but good point. Good point. Yeah, it, it just a little more surface area to contact. Same thing, uh, quite a bit more material, and I am going to comb it out. Oh, oh, and you need a comb too to clean. I need your, a comb too. Yeah, so you need a comb because fingers fingers you don't work. Nice. You need plunger style hack of players. I am you using. Need, you I need don't a need foam six. pressing tool. I don't need six different sized hair stackers. So you got two. I got two. I, I'm gonna do that, and 
then those tips are nicely aligned and sticking out of all in one direction. And now this is a little different, I think, maybe, than, than Tom does. Same deal. Thank you, Joan. I'm going to keep those just a little bit longer. Let me zoom out. A little bit longer than the, than the foam body, just so you can see them. And I'm going to mark that measurement. And I don't want to do it there. Um, I, I'm just going to snip these off square. And so what I do anyway. Do you have a special get, tool to snip? No, off no square. special tool. Do you have an L care squaring tool? <laughs> I'm going to go like that and just grab the very butt ends of that hair like that. And I'm kind of, kind of going to do the same thing, but in a different way. I, to avoid, to, so I don't have to trim, I can go and drive through those butts and that the hair is well secured. And it makes it so I don't, I don't have to do any trimming on the far side over there. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we're getting there. Now, since I've already prepared my legs, we don't have to get get into that just right now. They're already done. Let me zoom out again. Just and same thing. I'm gonna go back just a little bit. Get those locked in on the far side. I don't like to really trim my feet off until the fly's done, but you know, to each his own, to each their own. Uh oh. Oh boy. I got a, a, a left. There we go. Whew. A little while ago, Dave Jensen said, I don't know, Tim, this is five minutes and there's thread on the hook. <laughs> hey, guys, you know what? Dave Jensen just turned 50 years old. <laughs> How do you like me now, Dave? <laughs> uh, okay, where are, are we? Are we at the same spot? Uh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. You switch us, Julia. Thank you. Okay, so uh, a little hairs here, not uh -oh. too much. Fairly thin application of hair's ear, not as thick as you made the body, because you're just using this to, you're going to use it to both cover up the uh, thread wraps on those legs and to uh, go forward to the next tie-in point. So I like to start on top and make sure I've covered everything up. And then I look at the bottom to make sure I've got covered up all those um, thread wraps just for neatness sake and I'm going to pull that foam way back and just take a turn right in front and then come forward to a little bit of ways behind the eye right about there and then another drop of super glue remember it's called fly tie and not fly gluing yeah so far, I've used less glue than you. <laughs> and come straight down. Wow. Um, yes. Don't glue your, don't glue your fingers to the fly. Uh, and then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is tie my front wing, which what you is. Using? I'm using trigger point. Uh, so am I. I use trigger point. I also like macrame yarn uh, fuzzed out with a comb. Uh, it floats really well, but trigger point floats well too. What's Supreme and, though? I don't know. 
It says trigger what? point supreme. I, well, because I, I get the supreme from Enrico. You just get the standard. <sighs> I, stuff. I get the regular. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you want a you want a fairly you want a fairly good amount of wing here. So it's just probably I don't know when you compress it. It's maybe a hook gap, maybe a little less than a hook gap, but it's a it's a fairly substantial amount. Cut that off. You'll probably get a couple flies out of this one length of, of uh, trigger point. And I like that the second wing to be just right about even with the first wing. And you come in and take a couple turns straight down. And you notice I am biting into that foam as I do this, I'm doing the same thing that Tim did. I am biting into that foam. And then you, you fold uh, this over itself. You give your thread a counterclockwise spin. And you just hump that forward just a bit. And then you catch it like so. And that will keep that wing from ever coming loose because you got it looped in there and then you trim that wing about equal with the first bunch and i know that sticks up a lot but we're going to put a tab on top of there um you can see it here we're going to put a tab on top of there i think i'm going to tie in my tab and then uh and then I'll turn it over to you. Okay. And the tab is yellow foam. This is optional, but this is just another point of visibility for the fly. You could use red. And you want it to be, I don't know, a little bit, little bit uh, smaller than the wing, a little bit less than the... And I know Tim's probably going to cut his foam with a paper cutter. You know, about about like that. It's just a little tab. You could you can make this any size you want. <laughs> oh, it gets much worse than that, Tom. <laughs> a tool, a tool, and then a tool. Oh, I got I got a lot bigger piece than I need there. I'm going to cut this in half because I don't need that whole thing. And then you put your tab down on top like so, center it, come down, give it some good tight turns. And then I always trim. It's easier to cut in, a, tie in a longer tab and then trim it. Like so. That's just a little, little cider, but you don't want it to push the wing down too much. You want that wing to stand up. Okay. So that's the way. There you go. Yeah. That's the way it's going to look at this point. Hopefully, I got enough battery. Yet. I don't want to get enough battery. Oh come on! You All must right. have you must have sixteen different kinds of battery chargers. Uh, <laughs> you probably have a machine that makes batteries. It's, yeah, a tool that makes batteries. Actually, a tool that um, makes batteries. Yeah. yeah. Wow! I just saw myself. That was weird. One you saw water. yourself? Yeah, it was like one of those ever repeating things. Kind of weird. Um, anyway. I'm going to do basically the same thing, uh, more, more dubbing, a uh, little, little, uh, thin, dub, fairly thin dubbing noodle this time for me again, just to cover up the butt ends of the rubber legs and the, the butt ends of that, that elk. And also to, uh, not that it really matters, but to, to get my thread, up to the next tie down point so it so it doesn't show up on the bottom of the fly uh, it kind of blends in anyhow but i'm gonna do that i uh i i see someone is calling me out for uh my legs sticking out instead of down um philip i would invite you to watch a grasshopper or any terrestrial on the water and see which way the legs are sticking uh, they're all over the place. Yeah, they're and not. Also, ha they're not happy when they're on the water. 
No, and, and I think, uh, as we were talking about in the beginning, Tom, I, I think when they're out to the side, if you do sketch it, move it on the water surface, you get a, it, almost like a kicking motion, like mm -hmm. a, a, a frog. Um, and that really, that looks good. Now, I am going to do the same thing. Uh, no glue, but I am going to try to get just a, again, this gets a little twitchy. You just got to grab a little bit more foam there and uh, go like that to, to grab that. And this is, you can see I'm putting quite a bit of tension on my tying thread and in, in everything isn't spinning around the shank, which just drives me nuts. Yeah, that that little grab, that little grab when you try to get the corners of foam is 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 tricky. Yeah, yeah, it's it seems like it would be a little more difficult than that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, so I there might got, there might be a tool to help you with that. There, there might. Um, I'm going to do kind of the same thing. I'm using EP regular trigger point since I'm not a celebrity and um, I've already cut I I hate to waste this stuff because it is not cheap so uh, I've tied a couple other flies before I have about this much uh, cut off a uh, fair amount I do it a little differently I I would I kind of like a sparse wing here but um, I sort of found that by with tying chubbies I, I do like a little little sparser to me it, it keeps the uh keeps the fly not so top heavy i guess um i think six of one half dozen another though and so all i'm going to do here is just kind of like i did with the elk just put those butt ends down do them and then drive my thread through those butt ends to kind of fold them back like that and just because zoom out for this just, just because this stuff is so expensive, uh, and I, I, I hate to waste it. What I do is I'm going to twist it up, use a, a tool, of course, to grab onto it here. You guys have seen me do this before. I'm going to go a little longer than those tail fibers, and then I have this, you know, ready to go for the next one. Uh, the other thing that I, I really like to do, and again, I kind of figured this out with polypropylene floating yarn and chubbies, is to spread it out, to, to really get, get that stuff fanned out. And even, I know this is going to really get Tom's goat, is, is even when you're, when you're fishing it and you're, you know, you've put float and you've done all sorts of th things like that. Um, to, to comb it out every now and again because it does get matted down and I really think it helps um, with the look and the float you know, one little thing right there and you put on you put on your little spot so mm -hmm. yep. let me just clear the deck here in, I agree I agree I agree with the combing part um, I've, I've done it yeah, I, um, I, I've done it too. Uh, anytime you use EP fiber, you need to carry a comb. This stuff does get matted after a fish or two, and you, and you need to comb it out, whether it's a yeah. streamer or a dry fly. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm different than most people, but I like consistency between my flies. So I want the first fly to look like the second and the third and the fourth and so on. Oh, so, a tool. A, a tool. tool for a tool. But rather than relying on my eyeballs or anything like that to uh for size i i just use a a, a hole punch really ah. expensive tool um ah. Ah. and so that little that little guy sits right on top of there and ah. I, I just split them in half and that way you know you have everything looks kind of consistent between oh lots. it looks good too yeah so just uh and i think we're all caught up then yes okay yeah i think it's time to finish the fly finally yep. this is a long one yeah longer than i thought it would be yeah well it took you 10 minutes to, <laughs> to, get, to, get, to get the rubber legs 
Okay, uh, so now I'm going to uh, get another piece of that same um, rubber. And the reason uh, the reason I don't like to uh, I use a single leg in back and a double leg in front is because on a on a real official chubby chin robo, the legs cross in the middle. And I just don't like the looks of that. So, you know, the like legs double cross. X's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just just don't like that. <laughs> so I find that um, I find that turning the fly right side up helps to to tie in that far leg. And I'm just gonna take a, a loose turn or two. And you can manipulate it to wherever you want it so that it, you know they look right look right to you and then cinch it down and then you want to just loop this in front of the fly make sure that you leave uh, enough room so that you're going to have a couple legs that are long enough pinch it to the near side and give that a couple of really good turns Manipulate it if you have to. Cut the loop. Cut the legs. I don't like my legs terribly long. As long as they're long enough to give it a little wiggle. And I don't, I don't like, I don't like pull them up so that they're all totally exactly even. Because I think that's a little bit... Uh, a little bit too much. <laughs> tell tell then, us how you feel, Tom. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I see people raising the legs over the body and trimming them so that they're exactly equal. But uh, anyway, and then you're going to just apply a little more hair's ear, thin. Enough to. Uh, enough to cover those thread wraps and then just wind a little bit of a head underneath that foam and take one turn on the top and then turn it over to make sure that you're covering up those thread wraps just so things look neat on the bottom and then raise your foam and your legs up come right in front of there and yeah that's enough of a head yeah, you know what? A little bit more dubbing. No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm, not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I know you want me to do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. And then whip finish, apply the and then apply the adhesive of your choice and trim the head. And I like to trim the head oh, just about even with the, just about even with the hook eye. I don't like too big of a head on this fly. And then you can round the sides off a little bit, like so. And there Very it is. nice. Pull that one leg out, Tom. Is it is it kind of stuck? Yeah, it's stuck in the the hair. I think. Oh, the thank you, Tim. Hair. There you go. Yeah, we don't want. Uh, yeah, we can't. We, we don't that. want. We don't want this to be not cool for the reveal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Looks, I'm done. Looks good. Ah, all right. Um, so I, I guess yeah. Back to the rubber legs. And uh, I'm gonna grab one. And kind of the same, but as usual, different for the tie-in. I'm I'm gonna fold it in half. Leave the loop, and I just do it a little, little bit differently than Tom. Just one. Maybe two, and then move the, move them to their appropriate sides like that. And I, I don't, um, I'd rather not do any kind of cutting at the moment on those rubber legs kind of grab just a little bit of dubbing like a nice thin noodle 
I am going to check the underside, see if I, yep, I don't have much room around there either. Pull everything back like that. And that way I have that kind of loop. Just, I know it's a weird little thing, but back and out of the way and the legs are all back. So when I go to whip finish, there isn't really a chance of catching those legs. Except we just did. Oh no. Oh no. Shh. Don't move the muscle. I did this on purpose. This is a lesson, guys. Okay. When you run into trouble, don't all of happens to all of Don't panic. Just get that thread started back on there. I'm doing this for your benefit, everybody. I am sweating like you can't believe right now. Get it while you can, Tim. Happens to everybody. Nothing to see here. Snip. Can you believe on the whip finish? Oh my gosh, Tom. It's terrible. Snip the front loop. Now, with, with these cutters anyway, I, I, this is a little weird, guys, but I'm just going to cut the tab off. But I do like a fairly large head. Again, I kind of learned this tying with chubbies. It's it, tying chubbies. It's just a little bit of extra flotation. Um, I'm going to trim my wing while I got you here. Just a little bit. There we go. You know, I find le leaving too long of a head, it catches when I fish a dry dropper. And that's why I make it. Oh, shorter. it does. Yeah. yeah I and not, that's, not... that's why I make mine a little shorter. I have not really had that problem, but I can understand it. Well, if you cast so, like me, if you cast like me, then you'd have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear! And you can put on the head cement of your choice with that whip finish job. That's probably a really good idea. <laughs> 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 that was tragic, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'll put I'll put a drop of head cement on mine. Yeah. So. so and then of course, if you apply head cement like that, always a real good deal. <laughs> Stab yourself with your bodkin, but yeah, just make sure that hole is nice and cleared out. And I do like to kick that that front lip up just a little bit. So we got one wild har. Snip him off, but the under, underside is looking pretty tasty. Far side, not too bad. All right, Julia, shall we do the voting and the reveal? Or the reveal and the voting? Uh oh, yeah, I got to zoom out then, huh? Is Julia there? I don't know. I'm going to zoom out a little bit too here. That would be tragic if we couldn't vote today. I'd really be disappointed in that. All right. I put the voting in the chat. Ah. May the best fly win. Tom, can you I zoom out? Or I can actually change the formatting once. Spread my wing. There you out. go. Just primp it a little bit. There we go. No now. primping. No primping. Oh, oh, I get to zoom in more then. So yeah. you're not taking up the whole video space. Yeah. Get Fill the focus. frame. Fill the frame, Tim. Whoa. Again, re <laughs> remarkable how similar they look and how, we, and how we approached it in uh, many cases very differently. Yeah. yeah. Um, good looking bug, Tom. Is or it in the catalog? Is it, It's in the Orvis catalog? 
Well, it's in this. It's in the selection of my flies. It's for some reason it's not in the web selection of flies, but it is available from I think Orvis retail stores and and fly shops that sell fulling mill flies. Oh, okay. I don't know why they decided not to run it, or it was an omission or whatever. I don't know. Trying to get that centered a little better. Yeah, I like the um, the tail and back wing is elk combo, which is you know something that Chubby doesn't have. I, I think right. that adds a lot to it. Um, All right, that's probably okay, good. Okay, are we ready? I think I know the answer to this one, Julia. Go ahead. It's actually it's pretty close. But the sure winner is. is Tom. Oh, oh I won! I won! It better be Tom. It's his own dang bug. If I didn't win, am I oh, are we on? Are we still on? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. It would have been pretty well embarrassing. Well done, Tom. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. But I like, you know, like the pattern a lot. I, I have tied a few more of these than you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some practice. No, I'm going to add that to my collection. That's, that's a nice one. Warren, Warren, this is not in my book. Warren asked it's in my book, but you, you have, you have the pattern now and you have a video on how to tie it two different ways. <laughs> so yeah, the right way. And Tom's way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, we have some exciting news, right? What's that? Oh, are we allowed you, to say it? Well, I think we're, we can, yeah. Well, are, we good, are we good to go? I, I assume so. so. You assume so. Yeah. Well, we'll make it, we'll make it so now because we'll say we'll it on the so. air. Yeah. So go ahead. You, 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 you tell them. Well, at the at the it's the International Fly Tying Symposium, right in right November. New Jersey in November. Uh, Tim and I are going to do a live tie off, head to head, head to head, live in front of a studio audience, mano y mano. Yeah, for the whole show. Now, uh, it's it's two days, right? Yeah. So the show's two days. Yeah, because we're we're gonna have to do. I think just to be fair, don't we have to do it? Your fly one day, my fly the next day. Or oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I really cool. think that would be the way to go. But All right. if you just want to do your fly again, that's okay. Maybe we'll do the Rosen nymph for the Rosen streamer. I don't have a Rosen streamer <laughs> that I that I'd want to share. <laughs> I added yeah, that's the link your... in here, and I didn't even know this was happening. This is yeah. news to me. Oh this yeah, we just, fun. we just, we just uh, found out about it. We just, or we just kind of settled it. Oh, yeah. exciting! Yeah, yeah. We, we expect a good crowd. <laughs> well, if you each, if you do two ties, then you know you might have to do a third for tiebreaker. But yeah, oh that's, god, oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think about that. No, we just we just have a competition one day and a competition the next day. And <laughs> it's on Tim's home turf, so I, you know, he's got a home <laughs> home field advantage. Uh, I don't, I don't really, already. Have, oh, Holy I don't really have much hope with all those New Jersey people. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it, it should be fun. It should be fun. Yeah. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. Yep. Yep. Should be cool. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, I want to. I'm going to thank you all for for tuning in and for your uh, sense of humor and your support and your great questions. I, we didn't miss any questions, did we? We didn't have. I don't think we had a lot of questions. Just a lot of comments, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Which is good. I had a question about DVDs from someone, and you know what? Uh, DVDs are pretty much uh, been replaced by 
streaming, unfortunately. Um, yeah, you, I, you could check check your MySpace page for him, maybe, or your AOL account. And... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we don't have we don't have DVDs uh, of of this, but but they are available at any time. Um, if you're watching this on the web now, you can stream a video from YouTube. So, yeah. And they're there anytime you want them. So, free of charge. Free of charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't have to pay for a DVD. Such wonderful. a deal. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, I want to thank you again. Uh, Tim and I will be back in September. It may not be a Monday because we both have um, starting to get busier travel schedules. So, we will announce uh, the next tie off um as soon as we can uh i will be it's, here it's september 15th september 15th it's what a day thursday is? a thursday yep. okay i'll put we it in the have, chat and it's tim's pick we don't know what, what we're going to tie yet um i will be tying on monday i believe right let me see here i will be tying on monday august 22nd a changer bugger. Oh, so it's a it's a that's a, brave. A, a woolly bugger uh, tied with uh, uh, articulated body. Wow. Um, it's, uh, it's how many a, articulations? Uh, like three, not too many. Oh, okay. Um, but it's um, it's a it's a fly that uh, obviously Blaine Chocolate developed, but my friend Drew Price, who I uh, fish with a lot of do a lot of warm water fishing with has a, a variation uh, of the changer bugger. And uh, he and I have both used it uh, to great success. So we're going to um, going to tie that going to tie that uh, next Monday. And uh, we'll go from there. And then the following Monday, I'm going to tie a I want another one of my patterns, the wire caddis, which is a fairly straightforward uh, caddis larva rotation. All right, everyone. Thank you again. And um, we will we'll see you soon. And, and uh, I, I wish you all great tying and great fishing. Yes, thanks, everybody.